Commerce, SGMPG Center, Ujjale. The function of prayer is not to influence the God, but rather to change the nature of one who prays. I call upon Bhagyashree and team to invoke the blessings of God. Shambho Girisha Surapujita Kama Vairin Gaurisha Shankara Maheshwara Vishwaheto Shambho Girisha Surapujita Kama Vairin Gaurisha Shankara Maheshwara Vishwaheto Dharma Sarisha Sakalesha Daya Payo De Dharma Sarisha Sakalesha Daya Payo De Shri Manjuna Talitara Kuru Mangalam Me Kuru Mangalam Me Mangalam Me Shiva Shiva Shambhu Shankara Shiva Shiva Shambhu Shankara Hara Hara Shambhu Ishvara Hara Hara Shambhu Ishvara Samba Sada Shiva Girija Shankara Samba Sada Shiva Girija Shankara Girija Shankara Girija Shankara Samba Sada Shiva Girija Shankara Hara Hara Mahadeva Gauri Shankara Hara Hara Mahadeva Gauri Shankara Om Shivaya Om Shivaya Om Shivaya Om Shivaya Om Shivaya Om Shivaya Thank you, Dean. To welcome is to show honor. To welcome is to establish integrity. I now request Dr. Priya Kumari SV, HOD, Department of PG Studies and Research in Commerce to welcome the dignitaries. Om Shri Manjunathai Namaha. A very good morning to one and all present here. Respected dignitaries, keynote speaker, academicians, this is scholar, and all my dear students, I take this opportunity to welcome you all to Stalwart 2K23, Day 1 National Level Conference on Contemporary Issues in Commerce and Management. First and foremost, I would like to welcome the inaugurator of this program, Dr. P. N. Uday Chandra, former principal, SDM College Ujre. I extend a warm welcome to you, sir. I welcome the president of today's program, Dr. B. A. Kumar Hegde, principal, SDM College Ujre. I welcome you, sir. I also welcome the keynote speaker of this program, uh, who, is, who has joined us through Google Meet, Ms. Kavya P. Hegde, Assistant Professor, Department of Commerce and International Business, Central University of Kerala. We welcome you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. I extend my welcome to the chief guest of today's program, Dr. Vishwanatha P., Dean, PG Studies, SDM College Ujre. Welcome you, sir. I also welcome Ms. Shakuntala, Dean of Commerce, SDM College Ujre, to this program. Welcome you, ma'am. I extend heartily welcome to all the participants, research scholars who are eagerly waiting to present their research work in our conference. Welcome to you all. I extend a great welcome to the organizer of uh, this conference, Dr. Suresh Babu. Welcome you, sir. I extend my welcome to Ms. Mamta, staff coordinator of the national conference. Welcome to you, ma'am. I extend a warm welcome to all the technical media people and all the staff members, colleagues, and my dear students who are supporting us for the success of this program. A warm welcome to one and all. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome to you too, ma'am. 
I request Ms. Masuda, Assistant Professor, Department of PG Studies and Research in Commerce, to floridly welcome all the dignitaries. Thank you, ma'am. The fragrance of flowers spread only in the direction of wind, but the goodness of a person spreads in all direction. I now request the inaugurator of today's program, Dr. P. N. Uday Chandra Rao, former principal of SDM College Ujjwari, with us to inaugurate the conference to inaugural address. Uh, dignita uh, dignitaries on the offline mode and the online mode, and my dear friends. Uh, I congratulate the department for uh, making this national seminar on emerging trends in commerce and management. Always uh, one should uh, look, uh, being a researcher or being a teacher or being a common man, what are the changes happening in the world? So you will find when you start uh, observing the scenario outside, which is um, maybe next to your compound or on the roadside, then there may be new insights and that we call it as a research because once you have searched then you are research and you are doing you are searching again so having said that i remember one short story uh, way back uh, in 1990s it was written by alvin toffler uh, it is a trilogy the first he wrote future shock and the third wave and the last one the power shift and it begins the power shift with a small uh, story uh, say you may be wondering the japan considered to be the very powerful nation though they don't have the military strength but some people say that they are having uh, some agreements uh, nato and other so the emperor uh, prayed the sun god because their god is sun god prayed the sun god and the sun came and gave him the three things one is the sword the other one is the jewel and the third one is the book so uh, the emperor called the uh, ninja warriors and gave the sword to them because even today you will find the english movies ninja warriors they are very powerful with the sword then uh, he gave the uh, jewel to the treasury they are called as the mandarins even in china they are called as the mandarins treasurers and the book to uh, the book he gave to the zen master the analysis goes if you look at the early 14th century the sword ruled the world. It was the people used to conquer. The next 15th century onwards, it was the jewel trade colony. And now it is the knowledge. So now uh, say, you may wonder, I do not know if we have the hard copy of the, uh, the papers. Um, with all uh, uh, humble requests, don't use the chat GPT. Chat GPT is the latest artificial intelligence version and now the debate is going on, what will happen? So whatever recorded in the Google store, but Google storehouse rather, it will link it. It will link it logically. And if you ask a question, uh, something uh, which is not already uploaded in the Google, it will give a very ambiguous answer. And uh, as the name says artificial intelligence and the natural intelligence like the intelligence we possess, should be superior to that. It will be superior to that provided you uh, cultivate your natural intelligence. So uh, I think uh, the Department of uh, PG Studies and Research in Commerce have uh, uh, organized this uh, program with, the, with all uh, the thinking uh, that there should be uh, no restrictive practices done by the authors because as a teacher, as a teacher, if I don't believe my counterparts elsewhere, then there is uh, uh, then there is no meaning it. So because we always say in politics, it is the trust deficit and sometimes it is the bankruptcy of the trust, which will lead to so many uh, chaotic situations. So 
with this i uh, formally inaugurate this uh, program and i wish you all the very best and now all of you are uh, if you are well versed with the uh, technology then even uh, some online compendium can be uh, after editing a small compendium can be thought of i mean it is not compulsion i'm just saying the suggestion because always uh, suggestions are very free salahe uh, uchita kashta kachita so uh, you can uh, decide because once you make a compendium there's a small thing in the digital mode or whatever it may be so uh, with this uh, i close my speech with the small vedic verse ano badraha kritavo yantu vishvataha let noble thoughts come to us from all directions thank you thank you sir may i now request dr kumar egade pe principal sdm college ujjwal to deliver the presidential address Om Shri Manjunathaya Namaha. Uh, respected Dr. P. N. Uday Chandra, the former principal of our esteemed institution and also the professor of commerce, and the keynote uh, speaker of the day, uh, Professor Kavya Hegde, and the chief guest of uh, today's inaugural session, Dr. P. Vishwanath, Dean PG Studies in our institution. and the dean of commerce faculty shakuntala madam dr priya kumari the hod the department of pg studies in commerce as well as research dr suresh babu the organizing secretary my esteemed colleagues in the department of pg studies of commerce as well as the students and the fellow participants good morning to all of you i deem it as a great pleasure to be a part of this uh, stalwart 2023 a unique uh, program has been conducted in a blended version a national level uh, conference uh, organized by the department of commerce pg studies in commerce as well as research and uh, commerce department is one very important uh, discipline in our institution the faculty as well as the students of our uh, say commerce department are doing an excellent job in not only in the academic area but also in the research as well as co curricular and extra curricular related activities they have been conducting lot of activities intercollegiate fest as well as the programs for the benefit of the students every now and then they are organizing the activities for the benefit of the students as well as for the benefit of the general public and i consider that commerce is one of the most emerging discipline in the education system in india and it is a discipline that imparts knowledge related to the trade commerce and industry which also requires a lot of skill as well as a successful attitude and in fact these three things play dominant role in shaping the personality of the individuals that is attitude skill as well as the knowledge and uh, the department of commerce in our institution is importing all these three basic prerequisites for the all round development of the students and just now dr p n uday chandra sir mentioned about the need of the r that means you have to develop the competency because you know the population of the nation it has exceeded 143 crores now and we are uh, standing first as far as the population density as well as the total population of a country is concerned next to us is only china that means in order to meet the requirements in the days to come we need to acquire lot of good uh, say so called uh, better qualities in the theory of organic evolution proposed by charles darwin he always advocates that whenever there is over production over production leads to inter specific and intra specific competition or struggle for existence and whenever there is struggle for existence it is always the survival of the fittest and fittest is the one who is having the better variation better variation means the individuals have having the better qualities better qualities with respect to communication skill better qualities maybe with respect to the confidence courage 
and uh, so many other soft skills may be related to the interpersonal uh, relations as well as the communications is concerned and uh, the way to work in a team and to have all such good qualities and i believe that this type of blended platform will provide a, a, an excellent opportunity for the students it will provide a excellent forum for the students as well as the faculty to showcase their say excellent qualities what they are having and this is also a learning platform hence no doubt that this particular platform wherein the department has invited the research scholars to present their papers their explorations and innovations will definitely provide an excellent opportunity to showcase not only their talents but also it will educate and impress the youngsters to go forward so in this regard once again i congratulate the department for taking strain because i can understand that conducting a national seminar that too in a blended format requires a lot of energy lot of time as well as uh, say mental thought process so the department people under the leadership of dr priya kumari and uh, dr suresh babu has taken lot of strain in organizing this particular national conference once again i compliment them and i compliment each and every one of you for actively participating in this particular program wish i wish the program a very success all the best thank you so gratitude is an art of painting adversity into a beautiful picture so i now request mr ashit kumar assistant professor to hand over the momentum to our today's inaugurator as a token of love and gratitude Thank you, sir. It's not happiness that brings us gratitude. It is the gratitude that brings us happiness. Now, I request Dr. Suresh Babu, Assistant Professor, Department of PG Studies and Research in Commerce, to deliver the oath of thanks. The dignitaries of the dais and not on the dais, academicians, delegates, and students. It's my immense pleasure to propose a word of thanks on the occasion of one day national conference on contemporary issues in commerce and management. First of all, I express my sincere thanks to Dr. V. N. Uday Chandra on the inauguration of this one day national conference. Thank you, sir. This function, this one day national conference formal function is presided over by our principal, Dr. Kumar Ekade. On this occasion, I express my sincere thanks to Dr. Kumar Ekade, sir. Thank you. I express my sincere thanks to Dr. Vishwanath Shagundala, madam, on their presence. Thank you, sir. Next, I express my sincere thanks to Kavya Ekade, keynote speaker, on their presence. Once again, I express my sincere thanks to all my delegates, paper presenter, paper presenter, and the students of various college. I express my sincere thanks to our technical team, Mr. Sunil Hegde, sir, Sadish Chandra, sir, and again, once again, a special thanks to journalism department. Once again, I thanks to all my students because of their hard work, their initiative, especially for success of this program. Thank you, one and all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Now I request all the participants to stay back for the keynote address. I request Ms. Sarika Asuana to introduce the keynote speaker. Kavya Sehegde is an assistant professor in the Department of Commerce and International Business at the Central University of Kerala. She completed her postgraduate degree in financial management from a constituent college of Mangalore University. With over six years of teaching experience in her previous working tenure, she has developed innovative skills to engage young minds in research. She is actively involved in research and has organized commerce and management programs. She has presented numerous papers in international and national conferences on women studies and entrepreneurship. Her research findings through survey have contributed to the academic community and her papers have been published in edited books and reputed journals. She has attended several workshops 
and has chaired a national level conference and has also judged various national and state level commerce and management fest. She has organized national level conference, capacity building program. She has been honored research excellence award by Indian scholars under her guidance. Students have completed dissertations and research articles that have been published in conference proceedings. She has also involved in academic association such as serving as the secretary of alumni association department of PG studies in commerce. At present, she is a nodal officer for Tulip at university. We welcome you, ma'am. How the sound is going? How the sound? Thank you very much for uh, such a brief introduction. Namaste to everyone, respected Dr. P. N. Uday Chandra sir, Dr. B. A. Kumar Hegde sir, Dr. Vishwanath sir, Ms. Shakuntala madam, Dr. Suresh Babu sir, Ms. Mamata madam, and uh, Ms. Priya madam. It's really an honor to be part of this national conference. So at the outset. i would congratulate the team of uh, sdm ujre for organizing a national level conference confluencing various events especially on the concept of contemporary issues in commerce and management so let me start my keynote address by presenting the slide is it visible am i audible hello ma'am am i audible yeah 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 no, am i audible sir yes yeah you can proceed ma'am okay is the screen audible i mean is it visible akil sita Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, yes. I can hear you. Am I audible, sir? Can you hear my voice? Yeah, yeah. Everything clear, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. So today, the topic, the burning topic regarding the contemporary issues in commerce and management, what is being chosen is a buzzing topic which we have been chosen. Now, if we talk about today's world. everything is linked to the global and globalization but however if we look back decades or we look before the concept of globalization india was either connected spiritually or through trade even during the invasion time when the mogal as well as the britisher were there 
they had visited india for the purpose of the resources what india had so everything was a perspective of the trade itself later the emergence of issues came into the picture and the significance aspects happened then but for india global or connecting with the other countries was not a new concept it has always been rich in terms of the resources whether it's a intellectual related or in terms of the trade related we all will have heard the east indian company who has played a significant role in the industrial revolution in the england concept now why did they enter india the main reason again was to explore the rich resources what the country was having so they considered india as a platform to supply the resources for their industrial revolution and even if you consider the columbus or christopher columbus who discovered the india because of its abundant resources especially the rich spices what was there in indian country so if we connect the same concept of globalization which i told regarding the trade aspect now if you connect the same uh, concept of globalization in the spiritual aspect now the present or the presence of the renowned universities like nalanda university takshila university they all came attracted or engaged with the indian country for the knowledge purpose there was a chinese trader earlier who is known as the hu sung who actually came to india for the purpose of gaining knowledge and once after he came to india and then after getting the knowledge from india and when he returned back to uh, you know china to his place he described his journey of entering india in a book called as siu ki so in english translation it is known as the record of western countries so the main purpose of him again entering to india was to attain the knowledge and for the educational purpose so in this present the commerce in india can be considered to have started from the 1990s where the industrial revolutionization liberalization privatization globalization have connected india to the global linkages so at this juncture the technological advancement have reached at a greater heights and it is increasing in dynamic market so we can't change we can't stop any kind of changes because change is inevitable we just have to adapt to the changes if we don't get adapted to the changes we have to come out of that particular market so to sustain in a particular environment to sustain in a particular aspect we have to adapt the changes today in commerce we speak about the artificial intelligence i heard uh, sir uday chandra sir who spoke regarding the chat gpt now these are nothing but the artificial intelligence which is acting to be supreme than human intelligence now we have to be superior than that if we have to sustain in this world if we get connected to all these artificial intelligences and dependent on these artificial intelligence the days are not less where the artificial intelligence will rule us rather we ruling them so it's very important that this concept of contemporary issues in commerce and management to be spoken at greater context so that the youth can consider it seriously and can uh, you know create and innovate the things which are coming into this context or in this particular aspect so today we are discussing these concepts and before i uh, speak regarding the artificial intelligence or the uh, you know the present corporate scenarios or the present uh, commerce and management aspects i want to tell you all how the present corporate situation is all about so if you see the slide i have put there the quotation i have put there the information that the present day the corporate scenario is dynamically advancing and changing so are the problems and issues and challenges with business enterprises in this contemporary setup we are nowhere what we were earlier we have totally updated just like i'll give you an example of a simple example what we and uh, all can get connected to now let's take an whatsapp 
how this WhatsApp started. The WhatsApp started with a mode of messaging. Later, WhatsApp introduced the smileys concept. Then WhatsApp introduced the image concept. WhatsApp introduced the calling concept. WhatsApp introduced the video calling concept. Then status concept. Then now uh, it's a time where in a status you can even send the voicemail also. So that is a situation what it has come. So there are a lot of changes which is taking place. If you don't get updated, you can never go into the flow. So companies also are facing a lot of problems and management issues which are in a concern today. Like we have observed a lot of numerous products, techniques, managerial styles, distribution styles, which have undergone revolutionary changes. And today we are need to know, we have to know what are the changes which have taken place. To say this even further, I would like to quote a socialist who has in fact given a theory regarding the modern society. A British socialist whom you can see in the slide, Antony Giddon. Now this Antony Giddon is a famous socialist just like any other socialist who have contributed to the society. He has contributed his holistic view regarding modern society. And according to him, he says that the Giddon has described the modern society as the jagger net. Now what the jagger net means? A jaggernet is an engine of enormous power that can be somewhat controlled or directed. But if you go out of control, that will devastate the situation. So he says that situation, the modern society is a platform which will give you a lot of opportunities and a lot of environment where you can enjoy and you have control over it. But certain times when it goes out of control, then you will be devastated. You will be totally disrupted. You will be totally disturbed. For example, I'll tell you how I can explain this. Let's take social media. Now, social media is a platform which will allow people to get connected to various places or to various people whom we can connect physically. And this is a platform which has come up with a lot of changes where you upload your photos, where you upload your day-to-day -day routines, where you uh, tell your thoughts, share your thoughts, and also you preserve certain data, private data. It is under your control. You know what are the privacy uh, you know, data which are there, all the accessible data which are there. But yes, they also raise concern uh, about the data privacy and information control also. So despite of having some degree of power over these platforms, there is always a risk of data hacking, potentially causing the things to go very awkward. So Gidden is a person who recognizes this modern system where people are becoming increasingly reliant and dependent. In those days itself, he was saying that the era will come where people will depend on the modern society, modern elements which are coming in, in his time itself, and how the commerce and management will extract the situation or take this opportunity and threshold this opportunity and exploit the market. However, this reliance and control surpasses the certain thresholds, which becomes a threat. He also highlights that Everything or every changes happens fortnight. And everything, when changes happens, nobody will tell you. It just happens just like a while. Let's take COVID situation. When COVID situation came, we never had time to think what to do next because everything was very new to us. It could be for the government or it could be for the common man. So nobody had a time to think. It was a devastating situation for us. What is happening to understand the very, very words like pandemic or isolation or, uh, uh, you know, uh, sitting at home was something very new to us. We were not at all used to it. But what happened? The situation came and people did not stop there. Businesses did not stop there. Institutions did not stop there. Businesses started online working. Colleges started. Schools started online. Classes and work started having different approach. 
till uh, till the before days where we were not using the digitalization or the digital platform the covid taught us how we can uh, live in a new normal situation how we can utilize this new platform as a working platform so change is inevitable we have to accept it so gidan says that in case if we have to you know come up with a hotel earlier we had to look the infrastructure we had to see the buildings we had to search the kitchen we had to search for the cook we had to make the seating arrangement but see today how the changes have happened hotels are still there restaurants are still there but there is a concept called as delivery system we have zomato we have swiggy sitting at home we can just click and choose and everything will be in our doorstep we don't have to again relay go there and sit there so that dining concept which was uh, compulsory or which was a mandatory for us to have a, a quality time now it is not the same the change has happened it is no more uh, longer or no more uh, paramount to be considered as as saying that today we can consider a lot of cutthroat competitions with regard to the business and management and taking place in the job market the reason behind all of this is a human resource or hr strategy is what we can call about presently we find a situation if you observe earlier for one particular job people were very few only some people would apply for it because some people were eligible for it and they would get the job very easily so there were not much of the problem of unemployment but today is a situation for one job nearly like 50 applications will be there you just see the change of it so it shows that how the human resource development has changed to human resource management earlier it was a development which was focused on and today it is a management which is focusing on and this is a shift in a contemporary issues simultaneously the talent management has become a crucial in today's context despite of having all the well educated uh, employees uh, all the well educated graduates the company still blame the education system why because we require the skill oriented concept rather than having the theoretical concept but the education system what we are pursuing for are more into the theoretical yes of course now there are education system which has changed and which is giving focusing on the skill orientation giving uh, real time experience for the students like internship program and many more where the students can get the hands on experience about the workplace although we consider the powerful country like as it is been quoted that now india has been a top country in the population but how far that population has been a powerful population how far a man can be considered as a power so there is a question where whether the human resource are truly powerful or how can we harness that potential of the human resources to empower them and transfer them into the formidable workforce so that is a question what uh, it's necessary to be asked in uh, today's scenario and while talking about this there are various issues connected to commerce and management which encompasses the broad sphere as commerce includes a lot more many things and management includes a lot more many things especially the vibrant field of e-commerce and marketing so let us deeply dwell on the concepts of e-commerce as you can see in the slide now e-commerce or the electronic commerce what we talk about the online trading platform this has started with the concept of trading in a website concept of uh, having a buying and selling uh, in a online platform rather than having the traditional platform thanks to all these internet facility the gadgets what is available where we have become increasingly comfortable 
with conducting every transactional digitally. And again, thanks to the COVID also, earlier we were not so used to the digital concepts, but because the COVID has come, the pandemic situation has come. Of course, we were knowing the concept of digital, but we were not used to, or we were not using it frequently. But the COVID has taught us and in a way educated us to, uh, you know, update ourselves even in this digital way also. So we uh, got very familiar with the smartphones. We got very familiar with the paying transaction online, online banking, mobile banking system. We need not again go to a uh, traditional way of banking, traditional way of trading, traditional way of going to the market and getting the grocery items or uh, the luxury uh, items. We can get it in our fingertip itself, right? So every individual's without the formal education also was able to operate the gadgets or were able to operate this online transaction with the voice commands or video calls or even by scanning the QR code. And now because of the artificial intelligence, it has become still easier for the people. They don't have to do anything. They just have to command and everything is in front of you. So how far the revolution has taken place and how far the time has you know, flown away. If you compare earlier, to divert the mind of a child, a mother, should, you know, she used to show the moon and she used to feed a child in order to divert her, you know, the child's mind. But today the same situation is there, but process remains the same, but the moon has been replaced with the mobile phone or the gadgets. And uh, the, you know, the songs have been played to the children. The videos are being shown to the children. The YouTube channel have been given or shown to the children. And children are very happy with it. They will no more believe in seeing the moon or they no more believe uh, mother singing or the parents singing and feeding them. They are very much attracted to this kind of digital era. And speaking to YouTube also, how this YouTube has taken the revolutionary change if you see the YouTube originally it was for the entertainment purpose and now it has become the job optimization purpose the COVID has even thought that if even if you don't have to go outside you can do a job by showcasing your interest or showcasing your talent in the platforms like youtube or in the platforms like online or in the platforms like facebook instagrams and so on so which has adapted and continued the thrive in this ever changing world so we can't predict that how many changes can happen or how many uh, you know revolution can take place we have to be connected to it we have to be adapted to it so whatever the technological changes come whatever the revolution takes place we need to embrace it in a positive way so e-commerce is expected to pose a serious challenge to the conventional brick and mortar retail format so if you see brick and mortar retail format is nothing but earlier you had the physical way of entering and purchasing the product and services from the retail store. But today it's not like that. Though we have the retail store physically, even then they tell that we will deliver it to the house steps. They have their own websites. And now the apps also have been come where in mobile itself you can access and get the goods very easily uh, to your doorsteps itself. So now that brick and mortar system is not at all there. It is a click and, uh, you know, uh, enjoying the uh, moment is a situation which is there. So the companies are adopting online trade that are option concurrently and need to emphasize equally on their virtual business as it tends to escalate due to the reach markets beyond geographical boundaries and controlling uh, constantly updating their web portals and ensure service quality if you see today everyone are into reels why because info uh, instagram is becoming very famous earlier there was a time where you had orchid in order to have a social connection then comes the facebook then comes the WhatsApp, then comes the Instagram. Today, the Reels are making very much a uh, hike in the market and it's been uh, 
very uh, accepted very uh, openly and in case if the businesses today says that no we are not going to connect it with the instagram reels or we don't get connected to the social media where other companies are doing that other businesses are doing that then they simply leaving out of the market very easily they can't do that whatever changes happens they have to get adapted whether you know or whether you don't know and even if you consider the marketing concept also the marketing what we all are aware of there are four p's in marketing right and today there are seven p's in marketing tomorrow we don't know how many p's can add up so that is a situation when we are talking about the e-commerce and the electronic system so talking about the emerging issues in marketing now there are a lot of issues what we consider in marketing perspective so before i talk about this emerging issues i would like to quote a sanskrit philosophy given by charvarkar his philosophy states that rinam kritva gritam pibet which roughly says that live long or live so long and enjoy your life with the comforts and luxury eat butter or enjoy the butter butter is something which is considered as a royal rinam means it's a debt kritam means creation grinam means butter and uh, pibet means what you drink or what you enjoy so he says that you enjoy that uh, you know moment enjoy that present because you never know that opportunity will come back to you or that situation will come back to you but fascinatingly if you see this philosophy was given way uh, before the decades but fascinating part is that the credit policy system or the credit marketing system applies the same today it says what does it says the credit policy says you uh, take uh, all the luxury item you buy the things on credit basis enjoy your life uh, because you have the money you don't have to worry about it and earn uh, earn your money and pay off your debts but enjoyment is very much necessary right now though that credit system or the credit card policy uh, philosophy came in these 20s but this kind of a philosophy or the era was already there and already existed in the indian knowledge system so overall the commerce and management continues to evolve and must adaptable and must embrace the any kind of advancement and opportunity that comes in our way now talking about these emerging trends in the marketing uh, system now these stakeholder collaboration or the information and knowledge sharing or the artificial intelligence and marketing or the societal and environmental uh, sustainability is nothing but the collaboration among various stakeholders in the agriculture sector it could be or the rural sector it could be including the farmers or including the agri businesses the government agencies even considering the non profit organizations in the research institution research and development institutions will build a holistic and sustainable marketing initiative nobody can consider the platform alone everybody have to get connected when you have that holistic view you will be able to expand and explore the market in a very better way and in a very uh, you know updated way so that's what these uh, you know education system also is aiming for the holistic view of understanding the holistic view of giving the education where the students get updated uh, to the present and when they go on to the job they will be able to do the things and get adapted to any kind of changing environment and that kind of holistic a marketing initiative or holistic view of initiative in marketing can lead to knowledge sharing and it can lead to innovation it can lead to capacity building and innovation in marketing artificial intelligence when i say this artificial intelligence again today we have this internet of things called as chat gpt open ai and you will have heard even about ask diksha also in the uh, can i know anybody has heard this ask ask disha anyone has heard about it ask disha it's again a uh, internet of things by the indian railway system so what they do is that instead you uh, call and wait for the 
you know uh, the service person to talk to you or uh, you know rectify your queries you can just chat with the artificial intelligence who will give you the preliminary solutions so today same thing has been adopted in various marketing channels nobody is directly contacting you they will assist with these artificial intelligence or these kind of chat uh, like ask disha which will uh, solve you preliminary uh, problems what you are facing and at the preliminary problems itself you will have got the solution so you don't have to again contact so how these marketing is revolving and how this holistic view is giving the chances towards the innovation and increase the creation of supporting ecosystem now today if you see these marketing concepts also the trading concepts also or we consider a retail uh, chain or a supply chain it's all about omni channel of retail strategy now what is omni channel of retail strategy says now the motor and the bricks and mortar channel says only the physical existence the omni uh, retail strategy channels talks about the various collaboration of social media the various collaboration of channels which will give a seamless customer experience so it integrates different sales and communication channels that the customers uses to combine the strength of each channel and deliver a customer experience that is convenient consistent and a holistic situation for the same now if you see the ones who do not use this omni channel of retailing strategy they are very weak in retaining the customers because customers are getting uh, you know attracted to all those businesses who are giving them the platform where they can communicate where they can see the reviews where they can see what is uh, there in the market and then <laughs> enter the market and buy the product yeah so if you see the customer retention rate 89% uh, the retain rate in the omni channels are the ones who are giving this kind of a platform whereas 33% are the ones who are having a weak customer retention rate who are not following this uh, you know omni channel or the strategy in order to induce the customer so when this is a situation it's very necessary to adapt to the changes and uh, dwell with the changes what is uh, happening and when we talk about the future of electronic commerce or e-commerce now e-commerce will continue to grow as more people turn to online shopping as more people ask for online shopping because today nobody wishes to go to that traditional way because all are sufficient all are happy when everything is getting in your doorstep itself why would you like to go and buy this doesn't apply in all the time of course but most of the time people are getting connected to it people are gradually accepting this change and they want to make this new normal and they want to adopt these kind of changes and uh, lead a convenient and happy life so what is businesses do so businesses must accept these technology and offer seamless customer experiences so if when such kind of experiences are given then the customers will be there sustainable in the market now i'll give an example of these flipkarts amazons mintra or there are many more uh, platforms right retail sectors for that matter now what do these people do they give you a seamless experience and supply chain management wherever you are there you're getting uh, you know all the facilities you're getting uh, you know uh, every chance of how you can make the payment it could be or how you can access the product it could be maybe you have options even in the retail sector also they have their own website they have their own uh, you know apps where you can see the availability of the product what kind of product you can uh, go to and even if you consider the physical retail strategy also no more nowhere you have a sales person who is guiding you you have to take this you have to buy this or please see the you know possible options which are available in this particular product it is not at all there that concept is not at all there everything is arranged very systematically when it comes to garments the colors are arranged very nicely dark pinks light pinks and baby pinks and many more dark blue sky blue or royal blue and many more for men it is separate for ladies it is separate why because to attract the customers every self service option or every various shipping and 
pick up options so you have the authority you have the freedom you have the autonomy whether you want to pick up on what did you you can choose whether this day i want the delivery of the products or the next day i want the delivery of the products even payment also nobody had to wait for the cash on delivery or the cash payment it the gateways are there where you can go for credit payment you can go for debit card payment you can even go for the online payment or the upi payment and check up uh, you know the checkout process also it is very simple and it is very uh, acceptable for the people to dwell with the changes rather than sticking on to the traditional way of uh, indulging into the marketing concept so this electronic uh, concepts are engaging more and more and the business have to just adapt to the changes and not having any other option now if you see i have given a picture purposefully uh, in the slide so the picture what you can see is in from one of the online platform the retail platform where i have taken anybody ever thought that a cow dung cake will be available in the online platform also these cow dung cakes are the cakes which are usually available in the rural areas or the rural sectors or at least at the home where the cows are available they make this uh, you know the cake and then they sell it to the people physically but we never thought how the revolutionary has taken place if you see it is available in the online also those who wish to buy these cow dung cake they can buy it in online at a reasonable price and even you have a bank offers you have a emi offers you have a partner offers which is very much making seamlessly for a purchaser to purchase anything on the online platform now see the future of uh, the shopping what we are talking about we never even dreamt also that this kind of cow dung or the cow dung cake can be available in online platforms so we never know what kind of uh, situation will come what kind of changes can takes place in this uh, electronic era or the commerce era or the shopping era what we talk about now having said this uh these are not less with the threats what we are facing if you see the smartness of a smartphone now smartphone is something which will help you in assisting help you in uh, uh, you know uh, saving the data help you in making your life very uh, smooth you need not again type you can just voice voice it and the message will be sent now these kind of smartness the data privacy or uh, you know uh, involving your uh, uh, face recognitions or uh, you know location accessibility then uh, personal accessibility or personal activity everything is there under this smartphone or the smart is in the smartphone but ultimately these are the artificial intelligence or these are the digital platforms or these are the digital uh, gadgets which are controlling us today we are making them the data available to them if you have to accept any kind of apps we need to give them access to our uh, you know uh, storage to the location to the calls to the word and many more so we itself giving the permission for them that you collect our data you take our storage in our storage we will have a lot of uh, confidential documents we have a lot of images but what is happening if you don't give that access you can't uh, enjoy that app or you can't enjoy that process or you can't enjoy that particular uh, platform or the aim which is asking for so gradually we are so used to this kind of smartphone uh, things and the you know that li seamless life and very enjoyable life we tend to give access to everything and these kind of access will create a threat for us and will create a kind of uh, difficulty for us in this electronic era or in this uh, you know available era but having said this there are lot of changes and the lot of innovations which are taking place along with the threat what we are talking about so to be competitive in the international market it is imperative for the company 
to foster more innovative in their offering portfolio and accommodate the changes happening in the industry. If they don't be competitive, if they don't provide you the necessary information or the necessary changes according to the change in the environment, then the no more the customers or no more people will entertain you. They will go to the competitor. So the companies are striving very hard to innovate in every manner, in a cost efficient manner. It is only through the innovation that the companies can ensure the longevity unless and until you come up with the innovation you can't do anything you have to come up with the innovation you have to see what is happening right now just as i told you the reels today it is more about the reels which is happening so if a business says no we don't promote our products or we don't promote our company in this reels then people will not tend to come towards you or not give much importance to you why because in the reels they are getting every other competitors company and they are finding it very fascinating and they are getting connected to it so tomorrow we don't know Today is a real tomorrow, what will come? And if the companies sit quietly that we don't get adapted to it, we don't uh, you know, find the innovation, we don't uh, accept the changes or embrace the changes, then they just have to leave the market and go. So the company need to establish infrastructure and culture to promote innovation and set up suitable processes and matrices to amalgamate these kind of innovation and change management in the overall organization working as well as the values what the amazon red heart and alex in pharmaceuticals are doing it the amazon is coming up with a to z where every a to z as i showed you the cow dung so everything is available in one platform red hat is coming up with the solutions for the products of softwares and many more uh, solutions for the technological advancement then alex in pharmaceutical is coming up with the research in order to come up with the medicines for the diseases where it can can uh, help the people in overcoming and uh, you know curing the diseases to certain extent so this is happening and it is very much necessary to happen as well having said this uh, with all the managing changes and the innovation it's very necessary to involve ourselves in the work ethics now this work ethics of the employee have a direct influence on the employment contracts of the firm if the firm wishes you to promote if the firm wishes you to appraise if the firm wishes you to uh, you know uh, reward it will see how ethical you are in your employment era how ethical you are in your uh, you know companies how ethical you are in your workplace so the companies are constantly facing the challenges for the managers and the leaders who are to have an enduring economic returns through abiding its sustainable initiative. However, the sustainable corporate ethics and imbibing them into the company's protocol and employee is one of the key challenges. If you see today, the worth ethics, what we were having earlier, the manually we were, you know, uh, doing everything. If you have to sign uh, attendance, we had to, you know, manually sign whether it is coming in or going out of the business, we had to sign. But this category or this kind of platform was misutilized or manipulated through which the punch machine or the biometric concepts came into the picture. Now, what I had told earlier, how this artificial intelligence is trying to monitor us, how artificial intelligence is uh, trying to rule us, I'm connecting it to this concept. What was there earlier, the ethics, what we had to follow and what we have misutilized, because of that, we are giving a way for these kind of artificial intelligence to enter, like biometric or, uh, you know, the punching machine or everywhere there is a CC camera to see the alertness. Why? Because the behavior behavior has to be uh, looked after, the discipline has to be looked after. So this work ethics plays a very, very important role in the contemporary issues of commerce as well as management. And as I said, the change is inevitable. Commerce and management need to be proactively aware about the changes happening across all the vert vertices of the business 
and modify them accordingly if they don't modify it then they will have to end up leaving the market there is no option you can't just stop it how lies life goes on and on even the change is going on and on today is this platform tomorrow you don't know what robotic science will come how machine learning will evolve how it takes a revolutionary changes again so however challenges are part of the package uh, of the companies and they need to be better prepared for the same for all the challenges so having said this as the challenges is coming there is a sustainability concept which is very important so all the above what i have discussed the moreover everything concept comes with the sustainability when we think about the future generation which is yet to come we need to retain the resources for them where the concepts like green marketing or green banking or plastic free concepts or even corporate social responsibility which is a mandatory as per the companies act of 2013 to that extent we have reached now why it was possible because somewhere our miss responsibility which has happened our spoilage of activity what we have done to the environment has created all these new new concepts to come into the picture but however the sustainability is mandatory because every resources all are uh, equally applicable to that all are equally available to that so we can't restrict or we can't just utilize everything and exhaust the resources it has to be sustained it has to be given back to the next generation and that's what the corporate social responsibility is doing and when i talk about this corporate social responsibility this particular uh, element has become a strategic element in marketing concept people are observing people are seeing and people are getting attracted and people are getting attached to those company who are giving back to the society what they have taken from the society so such kind of sustainable activity what the business can do in this commerce and management era can bring a revolution change in tomorrow so having said this i would like to quote the sustainable development goals uh, where the united nations have already been set up from 2015 so there are 17 goals which are connected to this i hope you all are aware about this the 17 goals of uh, uh, you know the sustainable development goals now in september 2015 all 193 member states of the united nation adopted uh, a plan for achieving a better future for all uh laying out a path over the next 15 years to end the extreme poverty or fight inequality and injustice and protect our planet so at the heart of the agenda 2030 which is aiming all these uh, you know eradication of poverty it could be a fighting against the inequality it has to happen uh, by 2030 and uh, all the 17 sustainable development goals which clearly defines the world we want and it is not just applied to one particular country it is applying to the whole globe so the united states has come up with the concept of this 17 global goals in order to eradicate all the concerned problems concerning different countries in the globe and try to remove such kind of a problem by 2030 and yes even india is working towards it and uh, making uh, its good step in uh, you know understanding this concept so you can see in the slide there are different elements or the different goals what the united states have uh, connected and quoted over here like no poverty zero hunger these are certain problems or these are certain areas where the globe is facing considering each country and each situation uh, so good health and well being quality education gender equality then clean water and sanitization and many more responsible consumption and production climate actions because of the climatical changes which is happening and the destructions which is happening life below the water the cultivation aquatic cultivation which i will be talking about in the next slide life on land peace and justice and strong institution partnership for the goals 
so no matter how large or how small regardless the industry is all the companies can contribute to the sustainable development goals and it has to start from the local you can't expect it to happen from the global level itself from the local it has to go to global that's when these policies can be truly implemented and these policies can be seen in this 2030 happening uh, very widely and the united states even says that companies can even follow the global compact there are 10 principles of global compact which focuses on human rights labor environment and uh, anti destructions so if these policies or these ethical norms are considered seriously then nobody can stop the globe to achieve this uh, you know sustainable development goals so as we said the global challenges ranges from climate water and food crisis to poverty to conflict the inequality and everything is in the need of the solution that the private sector can deliver and large and growing market for the business innovation so in the rush of these transformation system or the transformation of business strategy we should not forget the integrity and value what we are having we should go with the change along with the integrity the value the sustainable development what is needed for the nation as i said i am focusing along these among all these i am focusing on the life below uh, you know the sea the life below the sea which speaks regarding the aquatic agriculture or the seaweed agriculture now we all are aware that india is surrounded by the water but to what extent we are utilizing this concept or utilizing this uh, sea cultivation system as a employment and as a production and how far we are making our way towards the globe or how is our ranking towards the globe so if you see here i have given a statistics of 2020 source which gives a global scenario of seaweed production so seaweed is something which is found under the sea and these productions are also considered as a aquaculture now if you see here though india is been surrounded you know by the sea level and we are only into these fishery concepts the seaweed production if you compare the rest of the countries our production statistics is only 0.02 whereas the china indonesia they have reached above 57% and 28% so my wish and my urge to the youth i i hope that all the research scholars and ug and pg students will have joined this conference so i am hoping that see you can take this platform as the uh, employment opportunity or the job opportunity where you can focus on how the production can take place in the seaweed cultivation and how you can improvise the statistical the global statistical and how you can bring this india Uh, are recognized into uh, the statistical era of uh, seaweed cultivation so yes today the department of fisheries government of india has come up with a concept called as pradhan mantri matsya sampada yojana now this uh, concepts or a scheme will try to help all the farmers who are into fishing who are into inland water service they are providing the opportunity to increase the seaweed farmer so basically we are making an effort to increase the seaweed uh, production to some extent where it will help the production activity of india especially in the aquatic and seaweed production activity in india to reach at the top Uh, towards the global as we are having all the potentials and yes the fisheries department has shown the potential of commerce and management trade in terms of seaweed so now having said this now let us see how the swot analysis of seed production or the cultivation of india is taking place if you see here how you can utilize this 
as a production activity or how, how you can take this as a improvement in the uh, development of uh, the indian economy let's consider the swot analysis now when you see the strength in the seed wheat production in india especially there are long coastal lines in india vast wasteland belts along with the coastal line in india availability of infrastructure and expertise is there availability of resources are there low cost of technology is available low labor cost is available domestic market is available seaweed farming is one of the best diversified livelihood option for the coastal community because we are available with the resources what uh, is required and there are a lot of opportunity also the fisheries uh, the aquatic fish or the trading of fish is not at all new we already have an opportunity we are already trading that we are already into export business so we need not again import any kind of seaweeds we can even utilize the seaweeds which are available and export that we can uh, help in the cultivation or the production activity of seaweed and export that that can be considered as a business there are multiple value added products from the seaweed it can be utilized for the food it can be utilized for the manufacturing and many other activities also so having seen all the strength and opportunity there are lot on opportunity for the youth to do research on these to uh, you know uh, cultivate uh, you know uh, ideas on this to innovate on this and to uh, start up their businesses or job opportunities on this which will help the indian economy to grow in a certain level so that's what this global uh, you know sustainable development growth is saying about so by 2030 it is trying to see to that every problems of the globe is been solved to certain extent to so far and that can happen only when it is being cultivated from the local level you can't expect it to happen at the global level at once so yes i having said this i feel that i have given lot of input especially in the electronic data and in the man marketing concepts and the hr concepts and revolutionary sustainable development concept what are the emerging issues and emerging trends which are coming forward for the youth and educationists and all the practitioners who are uh, you know uh, into uh, this commerce and management so i hope this presentation was useful to you all i hope all the researchers and research scholars have utilized these options for your research area and uh, i hope all the academicians will look forward to these kind of ideas and promote these kind of ideas for the future also so having said this uh, i thank the sdm uh, college ujre for giving me an opportunity to explore and uh, share my small knowledge or little knowledge with the with all the people who all the participants who are connected over here and uh, giving some kind of knowledge to them so i thank you so much i congratulate for uh, organizing this national level conference uh, and giving opportunity to lot of the researchers to present their papers to showcase their research skills to showcase their innovation and uh, coming up with the great great ideas so thank you so much especially i thank uh, dr suresh babu sir who invited me to be part of this uh, session to be part of this conference uh, i'm very grateful and i'm very thankful to all the staffs students of department of pg studies and research and uh, commerce of sdm and all the uh, academicians who are present over here and the dignitaries who are present over here uh, thank you so much uh, once again thank you ma'am your valuable presentation once again thank you for you ma'am thank you ma'am if anyone is having any queries please do raise your hands and ask the question first of all i would like to congratulate you ma'am it was a nice presentation ma'am you just told yes, about you. Uh, you just told about covid that covid has improved our technical knowledge because covid is hmm. the days uh, which we were used to technology So, don't you yes. think that COVID has adversely affected the trade and business of the world? And uh, are you telling that artificial intelligence can replace human resource? No, no, definitely not. I never tell that artificial intelligence can 
definitely replace a human resource that's what i was telling you at the earlier the human resource has to be supreme now what the concepts what i have told over here the main aim and the main urge was to tell you all that how you can improvise yourself how you can overcome this artificial intelligence the change is change is inevitable you can't stop this artificial intelligence you can't stop any other platform which is coming covid was just a platform which introduced people to the new changes it gave a platform where people were not doing anything at home and they started doing something at home so somewhere for the earning platform was created by the covid situation so that's what i was trying to tell and speaking regarding the supremacy ultimately the artificial intelligence is created by the humans itself so it is with us it is among us how do you utilize it if you get or dependent on these kind of chat gpt or these kind of uh, you know electronic gadgets very frequently you won't be able to come up with innovative ideas you won't be able to come up with uh, any kind of innovations or innovations why because you're totally dependent on these gadgets you're totally depend on these era i'll give you an example in the earlier days when we were having a small mobile we were very happy we were nicely speaking to our family the social connection was a physical connection what you know face to face connection what we were having we never had these kind of uh, mobile uh, concept or getting connected to mobile but today is a platform where leaving a mobile is a very difficult task for us even nothing is there in the mobile no notification nothing is there every moment every second we tend to hold the mobile and see is there anything is there something if nothing is that we'll go to google and search we'll see the youtube and search we see the instagram and see we see social media and see we try to post our photos now all these medias came for the purpose of helping us to be innovative to be uh, updated to uh, change our lifestyle but of course we should not be dependent on this if we depend on this then there are no days where you know the artificial can rule us so we have to be supreme we have to update we have to uh, you know innovate we need to think we need to learn and we need to keep updating ourselves so that we don't depend on this artificial intelligence we use our own human intelligence so that's what i was about to tell i hope i'm clear thank you ma'am is there any other queries please do raise your hands and ask the question ma'am uh, can you just tell how e-commerce helps small business to sell directly to customers okay now see the small business is what you are talking about is of uh, those businesses who are not having much of the capital or much of the uh, uh, you know investment level now these people are also having a smartphones are also connected to the social media now what i was trying to tell earlier was the small businesses who never got connected to these electronic changes or never got connected to this online platform they remain the same because customers never came to them when these people innovate themselves and also accept the change what is happening gradually it will attract the customers there are a lot of people who are doing this also see earlier again i'll tell you all the example this covid situation only what i am telling the earlier these vendors and all they were never having these upi system they were never having this payment system and all now what happened when this covid situation came the whole era of payment the gateway changed right people were so used to scanning people were so used to online payment they never keep the cash because they feel that cash is not required just a 50 rupees or 30 rupees or more than enough but maximum cash let it be in the card or let it be in the account so today what is happening is the changes is taking place even the small businesses also they are adapting these changes and those who have adopted they are enjoying their business very nicely and they are revolutionizing their business and increasing their business also there is nobody who is telling that our businesses are low it is the change in mind and change in perspective what you are expected if you are unable to accept that change then definitely uh, you know nothing can happen so that's what so the, in this way the change is happening there is nowhere uh, you know the small businesses are not uh, competitive or not uh, uh, relevant in the market they are also competitive right now because they are accepting the changes 
Thank you, ma'am. Uh, if there is any question, you can ask, and this will be the last question. Please do raise your hand. Ma'am, as a comma student, we know a fact that more than anything else, businessmen must concentrate upon profit maximization. But along with that, uh, we even should consider sustainability development and CSR activities. How can a businessman frame strategy to balance both profit maximization as well as sustainability development? Okay, I will give a counter question to you that why do the business run a business in the environment? Who gave the authority for the business to run their business in the environment? Market. Market. Market or a society, right? So when you are taking something from the society, it is a humanity or it is a grounds of uh, humanity where a business has to give back to the society also. The earlier a businesses accept this, the more and better the business can be. If we are in the notion that only profitability is there because we are a small business people, that's not going to happen. Here, nowhere the business is small business or a large business. It is ultimately a business. The giant is also doing a business. The small company companies are also doing a business. It is on your perspective how you want to do a business. The responsibility, social responsibility is a must because we are using that environment which is allowing us to do the business and we have got everything from that environment itself. If we are not ready to give at least a 2% of the profit or at least a minimum profit for that matter because CSR may not be uh, mandatory for every company. It is to the threshold of certain company where they have to do. But anyway, if you are taking these small companies also, if you are unable to give them in one or the other way, it need not be that you have to give cash only. It need not be you have to give anything only you can do in many other ways also csr activity it is just that uh, the statement which is given two percent has to be given for the purpose of csr activity so uh, there is no concept of small business doing the csr we are having less profit definitely not if you want to sustain if you want people to accept you if you want society to accept you be ready to give part of it to the society that's how the society grows. If you are not ready to make your society or you don't consider the societal problem, in society also doesn't consider you to run your business. I hope I have justified. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now we are at the end of the formal session. I now request Ms. Mamata K, Assistant Professor, to deliver the oath of thanks. On behalf of the Department of PG Studies and Research in Commerce, I would like to extend my gratitude to the keynote speaker, Kavya Hegde, for spending her precious time with us and sparing valuable thoughts with us. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. I request all the presenters to join the paper presentation through the link provided. The paper presentation will begin